liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? How is it going? It's going, man. All right. Feeling, feeling good. I actually got myself a little glass of whiskey. I noticed yeah. that you got the tall glass and still couldn't keep all the whiskey <laughs> in the glass. And I didn't pour very much either, by the way. <laughs> it was a small pour in a big glass. Yeah. It's still escaping. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty terrible. It is. What you gonna do though? Yeah. <laughs> um. You you got the uh, the coffee flavored stuff, right? I did. Yeah. I, I was in the mood for a change of pace. I hadn't had it in a while. I saw it. Saw it in there staring at me. Yeah. I um. It had been a while, so I went down this weekend uh, to the new uh, liquor store. It's still ABC, but yeah. it's a, it's a select. The select ABC. Store. Yeah. Um, so they have more than your average ABC. Yeah, which isn't <laughs> still really, isn't still yeah. isn't great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it could be worse. <coughs> clearly, yeah. Um, we should all hope that Corona can't be transferred through the micro microphone here. <laughs> um, Gary's trying to infect us all. I'm like ninety percent sure I don't have Corona. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that other ten. That that ten percent's hanging out there. But yeah. if I do, it's a mild case. Okay, but that doesn't mean that mine will be. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, just, I, I don't have crap. Like 90%, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough for me. Oh. Not enough. But uh, anyway, so I went down to the new place, and um, and I hadn't gotten to actually walk around and look for myself in a liquor store in a, in it's a while. It's been a while now, yeah. Um, and I got to this weekend, so I spent like a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my uh, my... Bars stocked again. I was so. gonna say when I was looking at your bottles, and I was like, "Yeah, there's some there's some staples that are back." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you <laughs> you try and spread it around when you don't know when you're gonna get get back to the yeah. the you know the stuff that you're used to drinking. Yeah. And you know, at least I could always get uh, Wild Turkey 101. You yeah. Can, you can always rely on that. Oh yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. It was nice to add some some new things and some new stuff and some <laughs> scotch and. Yeah. Some yeah, some some things that I had had a harder time finding. I was actually going to make a cocktail a couple of weeks ago for a friend, and uh, I realized I didn't have enough triple sec for it. <laughs> so um, I got a little bottle of Cointreau too. I was like, yes, all right, yep. needed that. Apparently, <laughs> that should always be in the house. That's add that back to the list. Oh, well. Anyway, um, and then through all that, I am drinking. Uh, what am I drinking? What did I pull out? Oh, I did actually get one of the new. Th- Things that I picked up is the yeah. Richmond Reserve, seventeen ninety two. Ah, the seventeen ninety two. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it it's is, and faves. it's very reasonably priced whiskey. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, this is uh, we had planned to do this a couple of days ago, but uh, I had a, a an unpleasant reaction to my last allergy shots, so we didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm still not entirely. Back to normal, actually. Like, I yeah. still have a little swelling and some stuff. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, you don't have the Rona, do you? No, no, no. Definitely not. You can actually probably still see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, uh, let's see, I got that shot on Thursday, so it's been however many days that's been. and <laughs> It's still there. Yeah. So good thing they weren't open today, because I wasn't going in. <laughs> you weren't going to do it. You weren't going to go on and get that next shot. <laughs> nope, nope. Going to do it Wednesday. They I actually went back in there and they said they were going to reduce the my dose or whatever. They were going to um, reduce the load. Yeah, they were like, "Oh my god, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not good." <laughs> it's not. How's your breathing? Yeah. And they must have asked me that a dozen times. Yeah. You're breathing okay? How's your breathing? Yeah, yeah, I'm breathing okay, but yeah. my arm itches like mad, and I, I would just like to tear the skin off oh. <laughs> if it's all the same. And I've got these like. This lump the size of two golf balls lined up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, I'm more or less back to normal. It's kind of warm in here already. Yeah. We're going to make this short. This is going to be a short one. Yep. <laughs> um, so this is our, our first time back since the uh, VP debate. Um, it would have been nice to have gotten some information out on that sooner, I think. But uh, yeah, I tell you, I mean, my impressions from it was it was boring. <laughs> like yeah. the, the Trump Biden debate was way more entertaining. Um, I thought it was more substantive. Though. It was. Um, I mean, I agree with that. 
it just it wasn't like if I had just like if I knew we didn't want to talk about it, like mm-hmm. I don't know that I would have made it through it. Like there was I was almost stopped watching it. Well, after the fly incident. I didn't so, even like, notice. You didn't even catch the fly, dude. I was, mean, I don't think that I was actually watching it so much as listening to it. So that's uh, you part listen, of it. But, yeah. Yeah. So I was watching it like on the TV at the house, which is a fairly good sized TV. And um at first I thought the fly was on my TV. I'm like, oh crap, that's a huge fly on my TV. I gotta do something about that. And then like Trump moved it or Pence moved his head and the fly moved with it. I was like, oh, that's on Pence. <laughs> I am. It's kind of amazing to me that that became the story of the debate. Yeah, yeah. Other than being a minor annoyance to me, like I didn't think that it would be like what it became. Like. Yeah. I mean, and it seems like now I could be wrong, but I would assume um, that the uh, moderator uh, yeah. had a um, a little in ear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thing, and it seems to me that somebody in the control room could have said, "Hey." Yeah. And I don't know if the moderator could see it from where she was, but if she could, I mean, I just, it's kind of amazing to me that nobody <laughs> said anything. Yeah. At the Cause time. it was there for a minute, like or a couple of minutes, I guess. Two minutes they say. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it seemed like it was a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, it's weird that the, uh, discussion about it is that, you know, this was, there was no, there was no fireworks and so forth, but that was the big complaint about the, the presidential debate yeah. is that there were so many fireworks. It was terrible. It was, yeah. you know, unbecoming of, um, of the office. Yeah, yeah, and all this stuff. And now, yeah. but I was just kind of irritated from the very beginning is like, wait a minute. We're just sitting at a desk. Yeah. Like, so I, mean, so I wasn't the only one that was off put by that. So when they came in and they sat down, like it didn't really bother me because you couldn't really tell like through the debate. Mm. But when I saw them sitting down, it bothered me. Yeah. I was like, why are they sitting? They should be standing for this. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if you're going to confront somebody, you should be on your feet. On your feet. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. <laughs> it's like, let's sit down and fight. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what? Wait. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm glad you caught that too because it, it did annoy me. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, it was essentially the same lies on both sides yeah. um, as the presidential debate. So there's uh, there's no sense in going into a lot of detail. They did talk about um, at least one thing that wasn't really addressed in the first debate or that I don't recall being addressed in the first debate. And that's the whole China trade war mm. issue. Yeah. Um, and then there were a couple of things that were addressed in the first debate, but are worth revisiting, I suppose. Yeah. So the uh, the trade war I- issue was it was kind of it was interesting actually because I thought that they both made good points, yeah. um, and uh, so uh, Kamala uh, was talking about how the Trump administration's trade war with China has failed. Yeah, and she's right. Yeah. Um, now she doesn't have enough. Well, okay. So, she doesn't understand economics well enough to know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is exactly it, and and it's a shame for her side too because uh, Trump or uh, Pence's response was, um, "Well, Biden didn't even fight it." Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that that was a that was a strong response. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, if she knew understood economics better, she could have explained why not fighting it was, was the right a good answer. idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> Um, but she doesn't and couldn't. And yeah. so, uh, it ended up being, I thought a point for Pence. Yeah. Um, even though he's wrong, <laughs> <laughs> even though he's wrong. Yeah. Well, and I kind of felt like the whole debate went that way. Now, part of this may be because Kamala is just not a likable person. Like I just have trouble. I don't know. She just bothers me. I don't like her. Um, but I felt like throughout the whole thing that Trump, I mean, I keep saying Trump, but Pence really I kind of, you kind of, yeah, I messed you up. <laughs> um, but Tr- Pence really won out. Like, I mean, I, that was my takeaway. Now, maybe mm-hmm. that's just my own personal biases. I'm sure there's plenty of people that disagree. Um, I think it was to be expected. And I've even had somebody tell me that they thought that Pence like crushed it, that he yeah. was awesome. I, I didn't think, think so. I wouldn't go that far, but I would definitely say he won the day. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and but there's so Kamala, despite her background, in my opinion, is just not very good at debates. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I've never seen her really do well in a debate. Yeah. Um, and I've only oh. seen her in a few debates, but yeah. what, like maybe half dozen. But yeah, I've never thought that she. She, she does, managed she it well. She just doesn't do well with it. Um, and Pence, what I expected out of Pence is essentially what I got. 
I just think that Pence is solid. Yeah. Right? Like, he's not going to do exceptional, and he's not going to screw it up either. Yeah. I mean, he's just going to, he's just like Kinda. plugging along yeah. right down the middle. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's he's going to be fine. Yeah. And he which was. Is, which is, was good enough. Yeah, yeah. and exactly. But yeah. fine is good enough against somebody who's not a very good debater. Exactly. And uh, there were some things that obviously annoyed me about the whole thing. Like, both of them, I spent so much time telling them both to shut up yeah. uh, watching this debate. They they both went way over time, over and over and over, over again. Over again, yeah. Constantly well, running over time. And Pence even went as far as to when they finally cut him off, like for real cut him off from mm-hmm. talking, when they started the next subject, he just picked right back up on the last subject. Like yeah. he like completely ignored the question and was like, mm-hmm. I want to finish talking about whatever it was we just talked about. Yeah, and, and that was irritating too, because if you yeah. use your time on a question to yeah. answer the previous question, then there's no reason he, to have to go back. <laughs> well, I mean, well, the problem was that he would use his time to answer the previous question. And then he would start to answer the question that they'd ask and run way over again. He got in time debt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like he it's it's like those payday loans like once you take one you're like a you're like stuck there and that's yeah. what he did with this time do you ever see the movie in time no i haven't uh, it's it was a really creative i thought sci-fi um film i, I mean unfortunately it has uh, justin timberlake in oh it, that's but, the one where they all yeah i have seen that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah where they i, the I enjoyed it though i thought it was good it was that's a neat what, concept. the first thing i thought of when you said time debt <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's what he did, man. <laughs> Good thing it, it wasn't that though, because he just like he dead. yeah, he would have been dead in the first <laughs> half hour. <laughs> um, now the the problem with uh, with Kamala, I mean, besides her running over, yeah. is that so they both interrupted, and yeah. I actually thought that Pence interrupted more than Kamala. Yeah, but I would also say that Pence generally interrupted when she said something that was so outrageously false. <laughs> that you he felt like he needed to yeah <laughs> like get um, something. that you really couldn't even let it go yeah. um because if you if you have to wait until you get your turn then it's too late like it's sunk yeah, in right? exactly right? and uh so but she would do this thing ex- excuse me excuse me i'm talking yeah, which and she, so she's like feeds into that unlikability, man. Yeah, like, because you she's, you're not she, getting behind somebody like that because it's condescending. She's exactly. talking to him like he's a little kid, and and she talked to all of us like we were little kids too. Do you remember the <laughs> moment where she stopped to define debt? Yeah, <laughs> debt means that you owe somebody money. Do you think that adult that people won- that are watching this debate? That yeah. are engaged enough in politics to be watching this Don't debate what, have no idea what debt means. Well, that and then she's gonna like go over her time to like to use it for that. Yeah, like, to define debt. To define that. <laughs> but the worst one that got me was when they were talking about packing the court and Trump. Mm. I mean, Trump. God, I can't keep quit doing that. When Pence kept pressing her about packing the court. And so, like, I was kind of excited because she, Pence had like pressed her on it and pressed her, and she was like, "I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna answer you." And then she didn't answer him. I was so mad. Like, I was like, you said you were going to answer this question. Mm. Well. And she did. Again, like the last time. Not yeah. answering it is an answer. Well, and, that, and Pence even said that. He was like, we all know what the answer is. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you, And he, was, he clarified. He was like, mm-hmm. no, she did not answer the question, but that's okay. We all know what the answer is, and we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and and she, you know, he was talking about history that it being at nine for 150 years, and I actually I think it went down to seven sometime in between and then came back up. Did uh, it? But maybe the seven was before then. I don't remember. Anyway, I, I don't know my history. I didn't go it, look so. it up. Yeah. So um, I know that it it has not always been nine. Yeah. Um, and there was a time that I thought it went down to seven. Yeah. From nine, and then it went back up to nine. <coughs> I could be wrong about that. Yeah, like I say, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, although here it is forever and ever uh, <laughs> on the internet. Immortalized. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the whole idea of... It, so she came back with like, oh, yes, let's do a history lesson. Abraham Lincoln had the opportunity to appoint a Supreme Court justice in his uh, last term, you know, the, the last years of his term. And I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't seem right because... Abraham Lincoln died in 1865, right? And yeah, maybe I'm not sure. I don't know. Or was it 1863? 
Why do I not know that? I don't know. That's terrible. But I don't know it either, so don't feel bad. (laughs) Or maybe do feel bad. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, either way, it wouldn't have been the last year of a term. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that close. (laughs) (laughs) So I I was kind of confused about that. But even if true... Yeah. Right. Like, let's assume that what she said was absolutely accurate, yeah. um, that he had the opportunity to appoint a justice and he chose not to because it was his last year of his presidency. And he said, let the people decide. Yeah. Well, that that's great that Lincoln did that. He was under no obligation to and neither is Trump. Well, that's just it. It's not like there's anything underhanded being done here. Mm-mm. I mean, it's it's completely all above board. I mean, he's still in his term and he just happens to have the Senate. Yeah. And Obama just happened to not have it when this same situation arised for Obama. Yeah. And that's the difference. Yeah. I and mean, yeah, they they keep talking about um you know how well the Republicans have flipped on their opinion about this thing. Well, not. so did the Democrats. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they both took the, in each case they've always taken the position that is most advantageous to themselves. And why wouldn't they? <laughs> like, right. I mean, you know. I mean, this I is mean, if you buy into all of this this theater or whatever, why Mm -hmm. wouldn't you take whichever one gives you the most power? Yeah. Um, Which is why uh, free markets are better than socialism. Yeah. Because everybody always acts in their own self-interest. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And it works out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Well, you can either, you can either work under a system that, that rewards everybody for people acting in their own self-interest, or you can work under a system where, People acting under their self-interest can uh, end in starvation and genocide. Yeah, right. <laughs> Make your pick. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, speaking of, the other thing that came up a bunch was the Green New Deal thing. Yeah. And at the end of it all, I'm still confused about whether the Biden-Harris plan, you know, plan is to uh, institute the Green New Deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, it's, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that I thought that Biden was confused about it at the <laughs> end of the first debate. Well, that's um, a, that's an easy assumption to make because he's confused about a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, now, Harris seemed to be promoting the idea that they were behind the Green New Deal. Yeah. Um, like the Green New Deal that we're aware of. Yeah. Not the Biden. Not the version Biden deal, yeah. of the Green New Deal, but yeah, um, the actual Green Deal. Yeah. And Harris certainly was behind it. So, I guess. I mean, I guess I have to assume that that's what they're supporting now, but I don't know. Yeah. That, like now, I'm more confused now than I was before. Yeah. yeah. And well, this is one of those, again, not exactly a straight answer at any point. Yeah. I mean, how can you say that you're behind the Green New Deal, but you support fracking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Well, and it just goes back to say whatever they can to get elected. I mm-hmm. mean, it does like make make no mistake of what's happening here. <laughs> Yeah, um, one thing that I thought was particularly interesting was their answer to the final question from the eighth grader yep. um, about division. Yeah. Um, the two of them took very different approaches to that answer, yeah. and I, I thought that it was interesting that maybe we can dissect that a little bit. Yeah. Um, not spend a lot of time on it, but I thought I I, I think it's an an important note to make. Yeah. Um, and the question was essentially like, how do you deal with a divided America? You know, the politics is so divided. Um, and a 14 year old feels bad about all this. And, you know, what do you do? Yeah. It's kind of, I mean, the, to sum yeah. up, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, there's too much. I sum up, uh, Biden or <laughs> <laughs> we're both doing it. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, let's start with Pence then, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I can totally flip it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Pence um, gave an answer that I found to be really interesting and kind of motivating and uh, that I thought clo- did something to kind of close the gap. Yeah. Um, he said that uh, that we enjoy vigorous debate and, uh, you know, an open market of ideas in this country and that we enjoy a good argument. But in the end, no matter how much we disagree about these things, we're all Americans and we're all on the same side. And, you know, at the end of it all, at the end of these debates, no matter how vigorous they are, um, you know, we're all together in the end. We're all friends in the end. And he, you know, cited that uh, uh, um, Ginsburg and Scalia were, their families were very close, even though they're opposite opposite ends of the spectrum in in terms of their judicial decisions and so forth. Yeah. and I thought that that was a really good, solid answer. And it well, promotes the idea that we are an open market of ideal, uh, ideas in this country. 
Well, and it represents more of what the country looks like because, mm-hmm. I mean, you go out, your everyday people disagree on stuff all the time. And I mean, I, you know, I've worked with a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. We all have differing opinions on a lot of the stuff and we talk yeah. about it, you know, we keep doing our jobs. We're friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's really more what the country looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, is that you don't have to agree with somebody to be friends with them, especially mm-hmm. on stuff like this, because ultimately it's stuff we don't have that much control over anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, true, true. We, we, you know, you have your beliefs and you talk mm-hmm. about it. Sometimes you change people's minds. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's, you, you don't have to, hate people for it you know right and I, and that's kind of what pence's message was and i thought it was a good one yeah i agree i agree a hundred a hundred percent i mean there i have a lot of people um that i'm close to that have very different opinions on politics well, than me. well me and you are in a unique position because we have opinions that not a lot of <laughs> nobody people, agrees yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly i find myself defending my positions constantly <laughs> yeah um and you know it's funny when the, it comes up when people are talking about ah, oh, well you know let's say you live in the south like everybody thinks the same thing you know, yeah but not the same thing that i think <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly it doesn't matter whether i'm in a in a democrat controlled area or republican controlled area i lived in atlanta too yeah all right. I, like it was, it was Democrat, and yeah. I argued with everybody there too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. like nobody agrees with me, no matter which of these no, groups. No matter my, where I go, <laughs> my goal is to make you think that maybe there's somewhere else to go with all of this. Exactly. Um, you, you know, the uh, opinion that we try to express on these elections all the time is that if you've you've been scared into believing that you have to choose this one, this bad one or that bad one, because if you don't choose the bad one, that's not as bad as the other one that the other bad one will get. Or if like, if you keep making decisions this way, you've already lost. Yeah, exactly. The, the idea of a choice between two evils is still evil, right? Like if you want something to change and, and fundamentally there's not really any difference between these groups. No, no. I mean, no matter who's in charge, the wars go on. They continue to spend your money as if it was their own. Yeah. And it, well, maybe not as if it was their <laughs> own. They'd take care like, of it if it was their own. That's, yeah. yeah, that's probably true. Um, there are slight differences on where the money goes, but they continue to take more and more of your money. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who's in charge. Yep. Um, and uh, so if you're tired of that, if you think that the system is broken, stop Choosing between the same two groups. Vote different. Pick something else. Yep. If everybody different. continues to think that they have to choose one of these two or the other one will be in charge, well, you're right. Yeah. That's absolutely true. But the the answer to this problem isn't to keep choosing one of the two groups that sucks. <laughs> <Right. Yeah, exactly. laughs> you try and find something else. Yep. And I don't care what else you choose. I have promoted third party candidates from all <coughs> um, you know, philosophical backgrounds for as long as I can remember. Yeah, uh, I, I would absolutely get out there and collect signatures for the Green Party candidate, even though they're a bunch of socialists and I absolutely disagree with almost everything that they want to do. Yeah. But it's not the point. Yeah. The point is that there, it's something different. Yeah, like, and if you think that something different is is better than my something different, at least you're choosing something different. Absolutely. Because I think we can mostly agree that the things that are familiar are, are terrible. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Back to the that final question. Sorry, that was a bit of a... Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I kind of drew you that way. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, Harris's answer to the final question was purely political. Yeah. And, um, and it was a real turnoff for me. Yeah. And so she goes on about, well, this is, cause, this is why you've got to vote and, you know, raise your voice and select the proper leaders and so on and so forth. I mean, so you you said that you thought it was partisan. It seemed partisan to me. I mean, that's how I interpreted it, but, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel that it was really partisan, but it was definitely political. Yeah. Um, and well, I didn't feel like, uh, like Pence's answer was particularly political. No. Well, and it wasn't really a question with that was intended to have a political answer. Like, it's that it wasn't the way it was framed. It was a question of, you know, what can we do to change this hyper-partisanship in the country? And, you know, that's that was that's how it was framed. It wasn't mm-hmm. really framed a, as a get-out-to-vote question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, uh, of course, she invoked the Charlottesville, um, the, uh, well, I guess she didn't specifically talk about the very fine people in that 
particular in segment. That segment, but she, she brought it up earlier, earlier in the, the the very fine people lie. Yeah. So I was complaining last podcast about not being able to find the original clip. Yeah. I found the original yeah, found clip. It. <laughs> so here, everyone, take a minute and yeah. listen to what Trump actually said. Yeah. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history, you're changing culture, and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you, had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. All right. There you go. <laughs> there it is, like in his own words. Debunked. <laughs> yeah, without question. Like, <laughs> And the whole... There's just no way to interpret it the way it's framed in the media. Well, it's selective editing. Yeah. It is. It absolutely you is. Know, let's cut it off quick before he actually, uh, you know, says bad things about the Nazis and <laughs> so right. forth. And then we'll claim that he's never said anything bad about them. Yeah, right. That's the other thing. Because, you know? yeah, that's even in the last debate, they're still trying to, after everything that was said in it, trying to frame him that way. I just, it's, it's a, it's just a false argument. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm so tired of it. Yeah. Well, it, it exposes them. It, to me, it just exposes the media for what they are. Yeah. And we don't have as many listeners as I would like. Um, yeah. Or as many <laughs> listeners as we had before the coronavirus lockdowns, actually, for that matter. <laughs> Corona has uh, not been kind to us. <laughs> yeah. I think podcasts generally, but definitely. I think so, too. Um, but, uh, you know, at least a few dozen people out there yeah. <laughs> now know that... You know, this is what was actually said. Yeah. Um. So we can move on from that, I guess. At this point, that's yeah. enough on the debates. Yeah, that, I didn't really have much else from it. Like I say. Yeah. And uh, there's there's bigger news out there, honestly. There is bigger news out there. <laughs> um, and it, part of it is getting some attention. Yeah. Uh, and part of it isn't. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so, there's there's two aspects to this. There's the um, Clinton emails and the RussiaGate scandal thing, yeah again and um i think the more important part and i really wanted to talk about this when we were planning to record on friday yeah. um because at that time it was getting zero press yeah like absolutely none um now as the clinton emails thing has been pressed and a bunch of that's been released that aspect of the case is getting more attention uh, yeah. but in a weird way so the first part of this, though, is that uh, John Ratcliffe, um, who's the director of national intelligence, uh, released um, some information about the origins of the Russia Gate conspiracy stuff. Yeah, and among those things were uh, handwritten notes from John Brennan on about a um, briefing that he gave to President Obama and um, a couple other people, um, and. Uh, and then a letter, of course, from Ratcliffe himself that was like summarizing uh, some of the findings. Yeah. Um, and so essentially what it said was that they found in July of 2016, into July of 2016, um, that U.S. intelligence uh, through a source had discovered that Russian intelligence um, had a report uh, that said that... Um, or suggested, I guess, yeah. to try and be fair about this, yeah. um, that suggested that the Hillary Clinton campaign um, was making up a story about Russian interference uh, tied to Trump in order to distract from the email scandal as it was going on at that time. Yeah. 
Because they had to do something because the email scandal was a big deal. <laughs> yes. Um, and so th this is essentially the origins of the Russiagate conspiracy that dominated the press for th almost three years. Yeah. Um, was that it was just a, a story that the Clinton campaign made up uh, to distract from her own problems. Yeah. Which is interesting. The thing that is most interesting to me is this, like, not that I think John Brennan is like a upstanding human being. But it, it shows that, that he... Try and make that argument against me. I, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right. No, not ever. But, but it does show that he, like, he was aware of this from day one. Mm -hmm. Like he knew what was going on. And he was, I tell you, he was on CNN the entire time all this was going on. But when, when they were doing the investigations and stuff. Yeah, well, that, it was after he left office. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, After, yeah, as, as a, as a private citizen or whatever, mm -hmm. saying that he had seen the goods, that he knew the goods were there and that yeah. it was all coming out. And this just shows that not only were the that goods he's not, a liar. not <laughs> only were the goods not there, but he was lying about there ever being any goods. Yes. <laughs> and we know that for a fact because, uh, John Brennan briefed, um, the Obama administration, uh, about this intelligence. Yep. And that was the handwritten notes heavily redacted, yeah. um, that we got to see. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, the, the third point, important point is that the intelligence services, the U S intelligence services, um, made an investigative referral to the FBI, um, specifically to Comey and, um, who was the director at the time and the guy who was the assistant director of counterintelligence at the time, which is Peter Strzok. Ah, Remember that? Now? Yes. Yep. All right. So, um, now, I, I had a time trying to figure out what an investigative referral is officially, yeah. and I s didn't find Still it exactly. Still didn't really, yeah. Um, but what I found was that in the uh, at the federal level, a criminal referral um, is when an investigative service uh, turns over to um, a pro prosecutorial, that's a hard word to say, prosecutorial <laughs> service, yeah. um, that they are recommending uh, prosecution. Ah, okay. um, so that's what a, a criminal referral is. And so my assumption is that an investigative referral to the FBI is the U.S. intelligence agency saying, hey, we've come across this intelligence. It seems legitimate to us. You should probably <laughs> investigate the Clinton campaign to find out how connected they are or, you know, how real this yeah, whole story is. This is, is yeah, absolutely. Right? And that was the investigative referral was about the Clinton campaign making this whole thing up. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Um, but they sent it to Comey and Strzok, so it didn't go anywhere. So yeah, exactly. So instead, those people started investigating <laughs> Russiagate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? The complete opposite. Yep. Wow. Um, so that's the that's the background story of the Russiagate, and yeah. it, it's amazing to me how people are approaching this thing um, because what you have here now. Okay, so to be fair, yeah, my reading of this is not that the intelligence services or that anybody else um, within the Clinton campaign specifically or whatever yeah. said that this is what the Clinton campaign was doing. Yeah. Um, the, the story is that U.S. intelligence services gleaned information from Russian intelligence services yeah. that suggested this. Hmm. All right, so just... So there's, there's yeah, there's a lot of gap yeah, there's, between there. Yeah, there's wiggle room here. Yeah. I mean, it, it is possible that the Russian intelligence services had... Got it wrong. Runner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so this is not proof as Fox News or whatever. <laughs> I don't even think Fox News is saying it exactly. Yeah. But um, this is not proof that the Clinton campaign invented the whole Russiagate hoax to to uh, distract from their emails. Yeah. There is a suggestion, though, and a reasonable one enough for the U.S. intelligence services to send it over to the FBI yeah. um, that this is how it started. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, then the other part of this, which isn't even really connected, except that it is what was being covered up by the Russiagate hoax, yeah. if we take this story, as, the first part of this is true, um, is, the, is now they're declassifying and releasing a bunch of the Hillary Clinton missing emails. Yeah. All right. Um, now, there is no doubt that this release of this information is timed to help the Trump campaign. Oh, without question. All right. Yeah. There's no question about it. Somehow, though, um, this is the story, according to the New York Times. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the New York Times story about this is that this is an unprecedented attack on political rivals uh, using the power of the state. 
<laughs> well, that seems right. a little ridiculous. So, never mind the fact that the Russiagate thing that was used to attack Trump the entire time the entire- was created created by his campaign opponent. Yeah. Let's also note, though, that the Obama administration was aware of this. Yes, they were. And we of know this allegation. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, so it doesn't suddenly <laughs> seem like an unprecedented yeah. attack on political rivals using the power of the state. Seems very precedented. 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 Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the question then becomes, well, what about 2016? Isn't that another example of the same thing that you're saying is now unprecedented? Yeah. Because it's Trump doing it to his political rivals? Well, not yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's uh, indirect in that, he, you know, he's referring to the Obama um, uh the Obama administration, which Biden of which Biden was a part, yeah, um, and he's saying that Biden was aware of this also, et cetera. Maybe, 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 maybe not. not. Yeah. He was not one of the people. I don't, re- I don't think that he was one of the people that was listed as being present at this briefing. Yeah. Um. But who knows? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I would actually refer, but I don't have the memo pulled up. I have the, um, the letter from, uh, the DNI. Ah. Uh, So anyway, oh, well, Um, but yeah, the other point of this is that really these attacks are against Clinton, not Biden. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, And all right. So but let's take it to the next level, because their big thing is like it has been uh, a rule that you don't uh, you know, you don't openly refer to investigations uh, at this point in a campaign and so forth. All right. Well, all right. What I don't understand there is, well, I don't understand I guess it's the the founding principle here that I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, well, the, t- the root concept is what I don't get. <laughs> right. um, if if Biden was involved in 2016 while he was vice president yeah. in some form of criminal activity or corruption, <laughs> why should it not be referred to when he's running for president now? Right. Well, exactly. Well, it it irritates them though because. Because Trump absolutely is gonna is gonna do whatever he can to to he's if if he's got something at his disposal he's gonna use it and he's not gonna do like everybody else does and just kind of brush the the misdeeds of the previous administration under the rug mm-hmm. and that's he doesn't play that game yeah um. So, I mean, that's that's really what's got them up in arms, I think, more mm-hmm. than anything. And I appreciate that. I wish that the administrations would out the previous administrations. Yeah, it would make them all more accountable. Absolutely. If they knew that what they're doing right now will come out in four to eight years yeah. when another administration takes over. Mm-hmm. Well, it would be nice if they were actually accountable, too. Like, well, if, yeah. if we were prosecuting the George W. Bush administration for war, war crimes. crimes, then, yeah. you know. And yeah. we were prosecuting the Obama administration for war crimes. Yeah. And when the next president takes well, over, we prosecuted then, the Trump administration for war crimes. Well, then that's what I was fixing Maybe to say. Maybe we would get out of Yemen. <laughs> well, that's what I was fixing <laughs> to say. Yeah, Trump wouldn't be doing what he's doing right now in Yemen had he, if he knew what happened to Bush and what happened to Obama when they did the same type thing. Yeah. It, you would end a lot of this. Yeah. So, yeah, I, don't, I can't take that any of this as, I mean, you can hate Trump all you want, but... I mean, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's really all I have on that. I don't know that there's a whole lot else to say. The, yeah. uh, You know, we'll find out more and more as more of these emails are released. More there's people drip, that are drip. just like, you know, pouring through these things. I'm not one of those people. I yeah. just, I, I don't have the time for that, frankly. Yeah. Um, that could change if this becomes a much more profitable podcast <laughs> in the future. But right. uh, as of right now. To date. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, that's all I've really got to talk about. Now, yeah. you know, th- there's some things that I keep coming across that annoy me. Uh, yeah. We could talk about for another 10 minutes or something if we just want to fill some time. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm like, always curious to what annoys you, Mike. Well, I, you know, one of the things um, that I keep coming across is this idea that the United States is a racist, sexist country. <laughs> oh, Yeah. You're not alone in your annoyance there. <laughs> and I just, I think any statement like that um, should well, be pre- 
preceded by the phrase, ignoring evidence to the contrary. What, what I would tell you is, because I know some people that believe stuff like that. I've met mm-hmm. people in my life that believe stuff like that. And what I find is, is if you just watch YouTube and like maybe some mainstream media, mm-hmm. like you'll get that impression. Yeah. Like you can you can self fulfill that impression to yourself that mm-hmm. this is this is the reality. But then if you go outside and like yeah. go to work and like talk to your neighbors and stuff, you start finding out, yeah, this is not really most how people it, don't care. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> you may believe that because you've convinced yourself of that. Yeah. But most of the country does not believe is it, it's just not the reality on the ground. Yeah. Well, and. Uh, the truth is that there is evidence that supports that idea. Yeah. Um, both of those ideas taken taken separately. Um, and I understand why you might believe that. And I actually understand how you can make a strong argument, uh, particularly for the racist country thing. Yeah. Um, there is certainly uh, a disproportionate number, especially if you're looking at law enforcement. Yeah. Um, there is a disproportionate uh, number of, of criminal... Um, I don't want to say charges, but maybe that's the best way to go um, against minorities. Yeah, uh, well, minority and, men, the, and the incarceration rates are way higher. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, but I have a fix for that. <laughs> you start legalizing drugs and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can these a lot of these problems are fixable problems. It it is, but but there's another part of it too. Yeah. Um, and there, you know, uh, you could maybe make the argument that the um, uh, disproportionate number of poor, uh, in minor minority communities in poor communities, um, is a, a sign that this is a racist <laughs> country too. I I think that you can parse that and and, Break and that tear down. it down. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna say that that's not true. Okay. Um, but even so. Like, if you are a police officer and you've got your quotas and whatever, like, you know, you got to show that you're, you're busting people yeah. and, um, uh, you got to earn your salary. Yeah. Uh, there are some things that you want to be careful of. Yeah. Like you don't want to upset the wrong people. Yeah. So you don't want to bust, uh, some rich guy Yeah. because they can screw you over. Oh yeah. In, yeah. in a major way with a good attorney you know, et cetera. Um, and what's more, they can also screw you over in a major way if they've got the right connections, if yeah. they're politically connected. Yeah. Now, you can be fairly certain that if you're busting people in a poor neighborhood, they don't have the money for a good attorney and they don't have those political connections. Yeah. Or they wouldn't be there. Right. Yep. Yeah. Or if they weren't there, maybe they'd have those things. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, that's a that's a thing that's a reason that it ends up being, um, you know, it's, it's poor, poor people, people take that, the hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's, you know, I, I can see how you can look at that and say, you know, this is just a racist country. This is this is proof of it. Yeah. Um, if you have a science background, you know that that's not proof. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's just evidence. You got to you got to continue to stack up evidence, and you can't yeah. ignore the evidence that dis you know that disproves your uh, hypothesis yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and uh, but like I can understand uh, how people can think that way. Yeah. Um, I just think, and I'm not saying you can't believe that. I'm just saying you're wrong, right? To <laughs> quote a <Yeah>. friend. Um, <laughs> but. Mm. You know, it's it's this idea that comes up over and over again. And the other thing that I think when I hear that is, like, compared to what? Yeah. Well, and that's always, I think we've talked about that on here before, is what what's the alternative? Where are you going to go that's so much? How many places are that much better than what we are yeah. today? Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be my argument. I mean, maybe you can list a few, but... I, I guarantee you it's not the majority of the world. Mm-hmm. It's not like we're the worst country in the world. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> just look around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the idea that we're founded on racism is is just absolutely absurd. Yeah. I mean, our founding documents repeatedly talk about the equality of all all men. Now, yeah. you can maybe make an, a sexist <laughs> argument uh, there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the equality of all men. Um, and the fact that this country was formed with uh, slavery still as a part of it, 
Um, and it yeah. was mostly uh, a sing, you know, it was mostly racially divided. Yeah. Um, in in terms of slave slaves and free men. Yeah. Um, but not entirely. There are, there were actually still white slaves, and there were black slave owners. Yeah. Uh, so you know, don't think that yeah. this was a purely Strictly, racial yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, but <coughs> it was argued against the whole time, and it, the Constitution was set up in a way that they thought would end slavery. Um, but the more important thing was to create the union at the time, and yeah. that's actually how the civil, like the Civil War, became um, the uh, emancipation of slavery too. Yeah. It wasn't about slavery; it became about slavery. Yeah. Um, but slavery was a mean, like the abolition of slavery in the Civil War was a means to an end. Uh, yeah. The North absolutely would have maintained slavery, would have kept slavery if they could have kept the Union too. Yeah, that's yeah, because I mean, it just it came down to states' rights. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what it was about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the Constitution was created with the ideas that we'll put an end to this. And they created a 20-year moratorium from the signing of the Constitution, or from the ratification, yeah. uh, on the import of slaves. And they thought that the practice would just die out after that. That's why yeah. they did that. Yeah. Um, and the whole three-fifths thing, it wasn't to insult black people. It was to make sure that the slave-owning states didn't have a disproportionate representation at the federal government so that they could maintain slavery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the, this was all done. There, there was a goal in equality under the law. In yeah. this country, that was a goal from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and it's not the realities ever... of life got in the way, obviously, but that wasn't it, yeah. it wasn't founded on racism and slavery. It was it was yeah. founded on the idea of equality and liberty. Yeah, absolutely. And I say equality not in the sense that socialists mean it, but equality under the law that everyone's yeah. treated equally under the law. Absolutely. And that's the only kind of equality that I really believe in. Yeah, right. And it doesn't exist either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not in this country. No. So. Or anywhere else. Well, yeah, I'm not saying that. It, once again, I'm not saying anywhere else is better than here. You know, yeah. I'm just saying. Um, I mean, even if you break down uh, the, you know, if you take out the racism um, in equality under the law or any sexism that exists in equality under, actually there is, but it's usually the other way, even though, you know. Like, look at divorce court <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and tell me there's no sex. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, um, the even if you if you take all that away, like influential people, people with connections are still not equal under the law. No, and always... this is what we we're trying to express to. This is like one of the 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 ideas that has been persistent in this podcast, I think, yeah. is that that all the races, um, all yeah. All the genders. <laughs> All the genders. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that for a minute. Um, you know, just to get people on our side and show <laughs> how woke we are. Oh, uh, right. Or both of the genders, however you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever you want to believe, you can believe. <laughs> um, you know, uh, all of these these divisions that are created between us plebes here yeah. down on the street, working day to day, et cetera, et cetera, like... Those aren't the things that actually divide us. The division is between us here yeah. and the politically connected. Yeah. The political elites are the real aristocracy in this country. And everybody else, yeah. everybody else is everything else. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And it's, it's all of us against the few of them, just like it's always been. Yeah. Um, but the, the division isn't isn't sex or, or uh, race These or other things religion. These the media will tell you. Yeah, or any of yeah. that other stuff. The difference is the people that have power, the people that are politically connected, the political elites, and everybody else. Yeah. No, it's true. And there's a real easy way to take down the political elites, the okay. people with the power. You take that power away from the government. Yeah. And this is the other thing that we advocate constantly. Like yeah. this is the answer to so many problems. Oh yeah. If the you know if the government doesn't have power over the market, the market won't have power over the government. Yeah. Uh, it, and these that's, kinds of examples go on and on. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So that seems like a good message to end on, right? Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Facebook continues to censor my, um, my tags, yeah. uh, when I try and notify everybody that we've got a new podcast up. So follow the page, uh, please. That's the only way that you're fairly yeah. certain to get a notification <laughs> that we've posted a new podcast. Yeah. Um, 
of course, uh, you know, like, uh, share, um, talk about us to your friends. We'd really like to increase our listenership at, you know, back yeah. to the levels it was, if nothing else. All right. <laughs> Man. So. Um, so I have some ideas about some things that we can do, uh, to try and, and generate, uh, some more interest again. Um, but yeah, tell your friends about us, uh, like, and share, uh, subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Um, these are also surefire ways to, to know to when know we have we a have new a, yeah. podcast up. Um, I guess I can try and figure out how to set up an RSS feed from the website, uh, which is thelibertymike.com. Thelibertymike.com. The the is important <laughs> because if you just put libertymike.com in, you're going to end up with a very different kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and you don't want to go there at work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some tells me you visited this site. Well, a friend whatever of mine, it may be, a friend of mine pointed it out. He's like, I, I tried to go to your website today. It turns out the the is really <laughs> important. So what what is on the other one? So I had to check. You know, I couldn't. Oh yeah, gotta um, know. Yeah, uh, and now everybody else does too. So that site's gonna hit a little uh, spike, and they're gonna be like, what the hell? Well, that's funny. <laughs> they probably get more uh, visitors than we do, actually. Oh. Um, you know, the internet being what it is. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, I'll try and I, I'm trying to learn all the stuff. I'm not that savvy on the, the websites and, and so forth, but I, I, it's a learn as you go process for me. So, um, and if anybody wants to offer some help on that, I would happily take it. <laughs> yes. Uh, Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. That's how you can contact me. Um, and yeah, I would, I would really appreciate it. We're also going to try and set up a YouTube channel, um, I it's just going to be, be audio with our, like our logo in the background or whatever, at least for now. Yeah. I mean, I would like to do video in the long run. I've got really good editing software and so forth, but I, I, you know, yeah. I don't have the time, frankly, yeah. um, to really put a good video together. But, uh, I have been told repeatedly and asked repeatedly, um, are you on YouTube? Why aren't you on YouTube? You should get on YouTube, et cetera. So. It's one of those sites that people seem to use. Yeah. Like um, Facebook. Just be aware that our kind of content, <laughs> yeah. if it gets any kind of traction, um, it seems to be... Heavily regulated. Yes. <laughs> On YouTube. <laughs> there you go. Um, and I guess that's it. Yeah. Uh, so like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Um Tell us if you got anything to say, because and if you got a story that we haven't heard or something, man, I'm happy if you want to send me links and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that stuff. So again, Michael at thelibertymike.com, and uh, we'll be back, you know, we <laughs> when we get when, around to it. <laughs> whenever. We're trying to... We really yeah. are trying to get a schedule, but it's tough right now. Yeah. Um, so we'll be back when we're back, and... Um, and when we're back, we'll finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>